Good morning. It's the Zipper Lady, and we're going to talk about rectangles this morning. And I always have large quantities of leftovers, excuse my reach, when I make a cushion. So this was the boxing on a cushion that I just finished. And what I did was, is that I used up all my scraps uh, from my um, fusible batting. This is all that I have left from a yard. And all I did was, is that I just pieced it onto the back of my fabric so that I had something that was a little bit stiffer. But I always have all these little ends left over. And that's what started me making bags. And this is from another little cushion. And see how much narrower this is? This is four. This one is six. But my favorite one is five by 10. And you can serge it if you don't have a serger, zigzag it. But honestly, right now, what you're going to do is play. And so because you're just playing, you know, don't get too carried away. So the very first thing I do is, is that I only use one side of my zipper most of the time. And so this one, I stitched on for you so you could see about a quarter of an inch from the teeth. So the coil of the teeth are down, and then I just simply stitch across that. If you have my zipper, there is a change in the tape right there, and so you can just follow it. Let me show you a couple of different zippers. And these zippers are different sizes. So this one is a number three, which means it's three millimeters across the closed coil. This one is a five. And you can see, I hope, on this particular one where the change in the tape is so that you've got something to stitch against. And this one is a size seven. And what makes this a size seven is, is that it's actually a five, but it has been electroplated with a shiny metal substance so that it looks almost like a, a metal zipper, but it's still flexible like a coil zipper is. And a coil zipper is usually nylon coil. So you can see the size of the coil here. Here and here. And basically what it is is that it's nylon coil and it's sewn onto the tape and then polyester tape. What I find is, is that I always have little bits and pieces of everything around because I am an upholsterer. So I like this because this is a lot more flexible than number three is. The number five is a little bit stiffer and the number seven is a little bit stiffer yet. So think small zipper, small bag, medium zipper, medium bag, and seven for something that you really want to use a lot. And so all I did was, is that I just sewed this. This is a number five. I just peeled it apart, put the coil down, top stitched, or uh, stitched it, and then I roll it over and you can press it if you want to, and then I top stitch it, just like that. And you can top stitch it if you want or not. It's just, for me, I think when I have little kids, um, it's easier for them to get in and out of the bag. Then we're going to put the pull on. So I always leave a little bit of extra zipper at the top. And I want to match the fabric across. Long side on first, rounded side of the zipper pull, or the head. And the real key about getting these even is making sure that when you put this final side of the tape into the side of the pull, that your fabric down here is even. Okay, so I was down just a little further than I needed to be, so I'm just gonna back it up a little bit so that it's even. And remember, this is a five by 10 but there are no rules, which is kind of nice. Now you have 
a finished side over here and you can either stitch it up across the bottom and across the side this way. Let me show you what that looks like. So across the bottom and then across the side like this. And what you want to do is, is just make yourself happy with this. You can either sew it across the bottom and sew down this side, or if you do across the bottom, this is the bottom, then line up the zipper with the bottom seam and sew across here. You can do a French seam on this if you want to. You can line these at this point. It's all up to you, but what I really want you to do is experiment. These are what I call feet. Some people call them squaring it off or boxing it off. And basically, I really like about an inch down from the point, and I flatten it out, and I just simply sew across it. But there are no rules. If you decide that you like it at an inch and a half or two inches, Go for it, but you're experimenting. These are my bags that I make with what I call coffee cup corners. So again, it's a five by 10. And all I do is, is I stick my coffee cup down on that corner, draw around it, surge it off if you want to, and you get this configuration. And this is the cute little bag you get if you sew down the corner to the bottom of your bag. I've added feet or boxed corners to this. And my own personal preference, I used a five for this, but what I learned was is that I'd really rather have a three if I'm going to box this off. Because it has a tendency, even though this is upholstery fabric, it wants to do wanky stuff, and it doesn't want to really sit nicely. So I would do a couple of different things. If I was going to use a five, I might use some of the leftover batting in here. Not much left. Um, or I might sew it first. I usually sew it first. I usually start with a great long piece like this, just because then I can cut off what I want and experiment with it. So after you get done playing with that, I had this revelation one day that I wanted to see what would happen if I went all the way around on a piece of fabric. And so there are a few really ugly test drives of this, but what I learned was is, is that I just fold this corner over like this, for a right triangle, put a pin right there, and that's where I start my zipper. Again, this is zipper before I've peeled it apart, and I find it much easier to sew it this way. And this piece is about 20 inches long, so you can see how long this is. So then, I put the pull on it, and when I zip it up, it becomes an amoeba bag, just like that. It's great for my knitting, and because I put a little loop up here, and by the way, what I did was, is I put the zipper on, zipped it up, saw where it was going to end, then I just took a couple of stitches out tuck this in, made it and tuck it in, and obviously you could use a piece of ribbon just as easily. And then I top stitched it in when I went around the bag. And now I can put my zip, my need, niddle, whoops, knitting in it, and I have some place to hang on to it. And my thread, or because I knit socks and lace, so thread yarn can come out of this hole and it keeps everything else clean. Now here's a little shorter piece, again this is the green, but this was another piece of boxing from the same job, and I think this is four. Again, I 
folded it over, and I didn't bother to cut coffee cup corners on this, but you could easily do that. Put the zipper on, and here's a littler one. Isn't that cute? And this I did with fancy zipper. This is a, another one of the metal electroplated ones. This was from a pillow I was doing. Isn't that cool? And this is, I lined it, which gives it an awful lot more substance, which then makes it hold its shape better. So see how much better that is than this one that wants to collapse? And by adding lining, all I do is, is once I get the, the zipper sewn on, I pin it on this side for the lining, and then I turn it over, and I sew just inside of the stitching from the first stitch. So this is the zipper stitch right there, and then I just sew right inside of that, and I turn it over so I can see it. And then I left a pocket about this big, which is roughly five inches, or the width of your bag, so I can simply turn this. And then once I turn it, then I top stitch, pin this, and top stitch it as I go, and that keeps the lining in place. So that's my idea about rectangles for this morning. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them on Facebook. My zippers are sold on my website, thezipperlady.com. They're also sold at Coulter's Corner in Erie, Colorado, Jukebox Quilts in Fort Collins, here, from my friend Kelly, Piccadilly Quilts in St. Pete, and El Cajon Sewing and Vac in El Cajon, California. That's it for now. Go out and experiment. Have a great day.